any organization or any theory to be in relevance it must change according to the needs of the time if an organization if it has to reflect the changing needs of the time it must adopt some of the changing values in its system otherwise what happens an organization will become defunct and it will reflect the past or the bygone eras the theories or the believe belief system but there are some of the organizations in the world which are still holding on to their long uh, uh, held belief systems okay so they are not changing their perspective they are not expanding the classic example is the united nations organization so it was established in the year 1945 but it has accommodated the values which were relevant during 1945 but till today so it has not changed with respect to the expansion of the members there are only five members in the united nations security council this council is not expanding even after repeated requests by various countries like the the india brazil and various other countries so this united nations security council to reflect the changed value system to change the political scenario in the world the changed Uh, uh, the demography it has to expand otherwise it will as long as the united nations security council will not expand till then it will keep on attracting the criticism from all the corners of the world so india being the largest one of the largest countries being the second biggest country with respect to the population having the core values like the democracy in its political system it is not being included in the united nations security council though there are th uh, talks there are various other countries which back up india for the membership of the unsc but there are uh, five members which have the veto power they are not allowing india to enter into the system okay so in that way the unsc is not reflecting the changed scenario of the world still it is holding on to the f world war periods value system okay so today we are discussing about one of the international organization which is known for the security arrangements okay so now this organization is being expanded for the second time that means the members are increasing in its strength okay so that organization is the shanghai cooperation organization this is one of the regional organization in the asia and the eurasian region okay we are going to discuss about the Shanghai Cooperation Organization today By the way this is the logo or the official logo of the SCO or the Shanghai Cooperation Organization this is the chinese language and this is written in the russian language okay the chinese and the russian these are the two official languages of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Now in what context we are discussing about this organization recently there was one news that is the varanasi will become the cultural and tourism capital of the sco for 2022 and 23 cultural and tourism capital so this is cultural and tourism capital of the shanghai cooperation organization okay this varanasi Varanasi will remain the cultural and the tourism capital for one year. Okay, that is from 2020 during 2022 and 23. So after this 23, the another city will be chosen by the SCO members and it will be regarded as the cultural and tourism capital for the next time. Okay, for now, okay for time being for this year, the Varanasi will be the cultural and tourism capital of the SCO. Okay, so. this sco is again in the news because of the second context that is this year's heads of the state summit of the sco okay the top level meeting of this sco is called as this day heads of the state summit okay so this is scheduled to be held at samarkand okay samarkand in uzbekistan this is one of the historical cities in the uzbekistan okay in this city uh, the this year's sco summit will be held so that will be from uh, 15 to 
16 in the month of September. Okay, this is upcoming meeting of the SCO scheduled to be held in the month of September. Okay, it will be held in the city of Samarkand, which is located in the Uzbekistan, which is again located in the Central Asian region. Okay. Again, the third context is that the SCO is set for its second expansion with the Iran to be added as its newest member at the upcoming summit. Yes, right now there are eight members. Along with these eight members, the Iran will become the newest member in this grouping. Okay, so the Iran will become the newest member in the upcoming summit of this organization. That is in the upcoming means the September 15-16 uh, summit okay which we, which is scheduled to be held in the Samarkand so because of this region because of these contexts expansion of the UNSC sorry uh, expansion of the SCO the summit uh, summit, le summit level meeting in the month of September and Varanasi being chosen as the cultural and tourism capital of the SCO so these contexts make the framework or the background for the today's discussion in this video Welcome to the Classic Education YouTube channel. Let us discuss little more about this SCO organization. Now, I said the Varanasi has become the cultural and tourism capital of the SCO. Then, what is this cultural and tourism capital of SCO and which city is selected for this uh, title? Let us look into that. A new rotating initiative. This is the rotating initiative. That means the tag will be changing from one city to another city from year to year. Okay, this is rotating system. This is the changing sit system. Okay, by the SCO to promote the people to people contacts and the tourism among the member states. So the major aim behind giving a tag to this city. Uh, or this tag of cultural and tourism capital to any of the cities in the member states is that to promote the tourism activity as well as to promote the interaction between the people of the different countries okay so by giving the tag of this capital or the cultural and tourism capital the SCO is aiming to promote the people to people contact as well as to increase the footfall of the tourists in the different countries of the SCO. This is the main reason behind it and this initiative or this tag will change from year to year from one city to another city. Okay, This city for the Varanasi, for the first time Varanasi is being chosen as the cultural and capital city by the SCO. Okay. Each year a city of the cultural heritage of the member country that will take over the rotating presidency of the organization will get the title to highlight the prominence of that city that means so if in 2023 india will take over the presidency of the scu okay this year the summit is being conducted in the uzbekistan country okay samarkand is the the place of meeting for the scu in the uh, 2022 but in 2023, India will become the presidency or the, the India will become the chair for holding the meetings of the SCO. Okay. So, being the presiding country for the SCO, Varanasi being located in India, Varanasi being one of the ancient cities in the world, India's pride, India's oldest city, India's living heritage, this city is being selected. Okay. So, this tag will highlight the prominence of the particular city. Okay. Then, Varanasi will be the first to be granted this title. Okay. Varanasi enjoys the status of having the first city to get the tag of cultural and tourism capital of SCO. Okay. Now, let us discuss about the organization that is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, when this organization came into existence, what are its objectives, what are the activities of this organization, okay. Let us uh, discuss in detail about the SCO, okay. This is the permanent intergovernmental and international organization, okay. That means it is a permanent government intergovernmental organization. It is a permanent means it has the permanent secretariat, okay. In that secretariat, year long the processes or the procedures will be conducted and the, uh, on every intermittent 
periods there will be decisions taken by the organization okay this is intergovernmental organization yes this organization has the various governments especially there are eight countries having the eight governments in that way it is a intergovernmental organization okay it is international organization that means it is the organization between various nations okay the create this was created this sco the sco was created on june 15th 2001 in shanghai okay as the name the shanghai cooperation indicates this has the secretariat in the shanghai okay this took initiative in the year 2001 okay by the six member countries there were six countries which established the shanghai cooperation organization those six members were kazakhstan this is very important the, you have to remember the member states okay there are six originally these are called as the founding members of the sco okay six members were there but as of now there are eight members but there are six founding members they are kazakhstan china kyrgyzstan russia tajikistan and the uzbekistan these are the six countries which met together in the year 2001 and they established the organization called as the shanghai cooperation organization this was preceded by the shanghai five okay this is very important before the shanghai cooperation organization came into existence in the year 2001 before 2001 this was preceded by the shanghai five okay there were again five countries which were called as the shanghai five these five countries along with one more member they led to the formation of the scvo okay see this scvo has the very much significance in the at the global level okay if you look into the importance of this scvo so really this has the very crucial role to play in the asian region in the eurasian region as well as the inter uh, as a world as a whole okay so this has the this scvo has 22% of the world's land mass okay 22% 1/5th of the total land mass of the world is under the member states of the scvo 60% of the area this scvo member countries occupy or they have the area of 60% of the total area of the eurasia eurasia means europe plus asia okay the two continents together they are called as the eurasia 60% of the eurasian area is under the members of the scvo 40% of the world population yes the eight members the pakistan india china uzbekistan kazakhstan kyrgyzstan okay uh, turkmenistan all of these russia these countries make up the 40% of the world population and more than 30% of the global gdp yes more than 30% of the gdp or nearly one third of the total gdp of the world comes from these eight member states so if you look into this start uh, data so this really the scvo has the very significant role to play with respect to the economic development with respect to the security of the region with respect to the cultural and socio economic cooperation among the people and among the different countries in the region as well as in the uh, beyond the region okay so this is the importance of the scvo now so these are the various member states i said there are eight permanent members as of now china china kazakhstan kyrgyzstan russia tajikistan uzbekistan india and pakistan so yes pakistan these are the eight member states as of now but this year one, there will be one new member to this organization that is the iran we will discuss about the iran later okay these are the eight member states along with the member states are the permanent members there are other members which are called as the observer states dialogue partners and the guest attendees okay there are four observer states the afghanistan belarus iran and the mongolia these are the four uh, observer countries in the grouping okay there are dialogue partners there are six dialogue pa partners those six partners are um, armenia azerbaijan cambodia nepal sri lanka and turkey these are the six dialogue partners in the grouping and there are guest attendances so there are three organizations and one country 
which appear which attend this organization's meeting as the guests who are they one is the asean or the association for southeast asian nations okay association of southeast asian nations this is the one guest turkmenistan as a country this is the second guest okay cis are the commonwealth of independent states okay this is the th third uh, guest and the united nations organizations uh, sorry in a united nations organization or the un these are the three organizations and the one country the four members as a whole they attend the meetings of the sco as the guests okay these are the four guests six dialogue partners okay four observer states and the eight member countries in the organization these are the various members which attend the meetings of the sco okay now when did this organization came into existence what were their initial uh, journey okay how did the, uh, this organization traveled its journey so far let us look into the journey of this organization the origins in the year 1996 okay the there was a grouping called as the shanghai five the name itself suggests there were five members these five members they mutually agreed to they, there was a mutual security agreement between the five members okay those five members were the china kazakhstan kyrgyzstan russia and the tajikistan okay so if you look into these countries like the kazakhstan kyrgyzstan and the tajikistan these are the some of the countries in the central asian region okay there are various countries in the central asia okay Th uh, that region is called as the central asian region the K kazakhstan kyrgyzstan and tajikistan these three countries come from the central asian region along with these central asian countries there is the russia and the china these five countries they made the grouping based on the security arrangements that grouping was called as the shanghai five okay so after shanghai five in the year after five years in the year 2001 this shanghai five was created in the year 1996 okay after the creation of the shanghai five five years after this shanghai five there was a expansion of this five member grouping okay now the uzbekistan was added into the shanghai five okay shanghai five plus uzbekistan now it is called as the shanghai cooperation organization from 2001 onwards okay from 2001 onwards the shanghai cooperation organization was uh, created okay it, it came into existence in the year 2001 with the addition of uzbekistan to the uh, shanghai five grouping okay shanghai five grouping plus uzbekistan is now called as the shanghai cooperation organization from 2001 onwards so this is the beginning of this organization now there is a charter for this organization what does this charter say let us look into that this charter was signed in the year 2002 yes the organization sco was you know created in the year 2001 in the next year they signed the charter okay that is in the 2002 in the next year again in 2003 this charter came into existence okay what is this charter this charter is the fundamental statutory document okay which outlines the sco's goals and the principles as well as its structure and the core activities okay how should this sco function what should be the top level leadership what should be the summit level organization what should be the lowest level organization in this sco how long or the how often this grouping should meet what should be the activities to be carried out under this grouping all of these are you know uh, statutorily given by the document called as the sco charter okay this charter is the fundamental statutory document for the functioning of the sco okay now it, this came into existence in the year 2001 okay after 16 years this organization or the sco was expanded for the first time in 2017 okay its first expansion was in the year 2017 this expansion was you know uh, this expansion took place in the astana okay kazakhstan 
in the country of Kazakhstan, there was a SCO summit in the city of Astana. In this city, the expansion of the SCO took place. This is the historical meeting of the SCO. In this grouping, the India and Pakistan was accom they were accommodated as the permanent members of the SCO. Okay, so the full membership of the organization was granted to India and Pakistan. So this was in the year 2017, and this is the first expansion of the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Okay, now the organization has two permanent bodies. Yes, the SCO it has the two secretariats or you can say there are two offices under this SCO. What are they? The SCO secretariat. This Shanghai Cooperation Organization has one secretariat or the permanent secretariat which is located in Beijing. See, please don't confuse. This is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Okay, But this organization's secretariat or the headquarter of this organization is not located in Shanghai. It is located in the city of Beijing, located in China. Okay, so headquarter of SCO or the secretariat uh, secretariat of the SCO is located in the Beijing, and the executive committee of the regional anti-terrorist structure. So there is one anti-terror organization under this SCO. It is called as the RATS or the R A T S, regional anti-terrorist structure or the. Okay, see so this. RATS is located in the city of Tashkent uh, in the country of Uzbekistan. Okay, so these are the two offices under the SCO. Okay, SCO headquarters in the Beijing and the RATS are the regional anti terrorist structure which is located in the Tashkent. Okay, so these are the two permanent uh, offices under the SCO. Now, what are the goals of this SCO? One is to strengthen the mutual trust and the neighborliness. That means they want to establish the mutual trust among themselves and the good labor, uh, neighborliness. That means they want to have the tension-free borders. They want to establish the free trade or they want to curb the terrorist or the extremist ex activities on the borders of the member states. Okay, So this is the one of the f goals of this SCO. Then, Second goal is to promote the effective cooperation in the politics, trade, economy, research, technology, culture and in various other fields. That means the cooperation with respect to many fields. One is mutual trust and the good neighborliness. Second one is effective cooperation. Then making the joint efforts to maintain the maintain and ensure the peace, security and the stability in the region. This is very, very important. So being the SCO its main function is to ensure the security as well as the terror free environment in the region okay so with respect to this goal uh, with this theme of the organization this third goal is very very important that means it want, wants to establish and to maintain the peace security and the stability in the region okay then it wants to establish the democratic, fair and rational new international political and economical order. This is very, very important. International, political and economical order. So, which is based on the democratic free principles, free, sorry, fair and the rationality. Okay. So, economic and political order at the international level. That means they are not only restricted to the Asian region, they are also aiming to establish the very good political and economical order at the international level with by having the interactions with the various organizations like the united nations or the wto or the imf okay so these are the some of the main goals of the organization now there is a concept called as the shanghai spirit this shanghai cooperation organization functions based on these some of the value systems okay this organization pursues its various policies okay there are internal policies as well as the external policies this scvo pursues its internal policy based on the principles of mutual trust mutual benefit equality mutual consultations respect for cultural diversity and desire for common development okay so this is the internal policy of the scvo but with respect to the external policy this scvo pol 
pursues this external policy in accordance with the principles of non-alignment, non-targeting, any third country and openness. That means there are other organizations like the NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. They are also security ar arrangements, okay, but they have the alignments with some of the uh, ideologically similar countries. They have uh, groupings okay that means once upon a time the whole world during the especially during the cold war the whole world was divided into two poles okay one was uh, capitalist country and uh, another grouping was the uh, the communist grouping okay so based on the ideologies the whole world was divided into two poles but this organization even after the 1991 fallout of the ussr or the end of the cold war now it is a unipolar world in this unipolar world this SSCO wants to establish the neutral uh, relations with the various countries okay so this is the non-alignment okay it wants to establish the non-alignment non it doesn't want to target any of the third country and it wants to be the open with respect to its uh, policies okay so this is what is the Shanghai spirit with respect to internal policy as well as the external policy of the member states. Now, what is the organizational structure of this grouping? Okay, at the apex level, there is a summit uh, or the there is a council called heads of the state council. Okay, it is the heads of the state council or HSC. This is the top level. Uh, council which will decide everything about the SCO. Below this grouping, there is a council of heads of government. Okay, this council is headed by the prime ministers. Okay, if the country is headed by the president, or uh, he will uh, attend the meeting of this council. And the, if the country is headed by, or the government is headed by the prime minister, so this council is represented by the prime ministers of the particular country. Okay, these are the two top level councils which will decide everything about the SCO. One is head of the state council, another one is the head of the government council. Okay. Then below that, there is a council called the Council of Foreign Ministers. Below, again below that, there is a Council of National Coordinators. These four are the very important organizations, are the, the councils under the SCO. Okay. Below that, there are various other organizations are there. They will uh, uh, you know, they will you know, conduct the meetings very regularly and very oftenly. Now, let us look into the Council of Head of the States. Council of Head of the State. This is the top decision making body in the SCVO. Yes, this is the topmost decision making body. So, it meets at the SCVO summits which are held each year. Okay, These summits are held each year and whenever the SCVO summits are held, this council also meets. Okay, So, these SCVO's meetings are especially held in the member countries, capital cities. Okay. So, this is the Council of Head of the States. This is the topmost decision making body. Below this Council of Head of the States, there is one more council called as the Council of Head of the Government. Yes. So, you might be aware that India also has the two uh, executives. One is called as the de jure executive and one another one is called as the de facto executive. De jure executive is the nominal head of the state de facto executive is the real head of the state or this de facto executive is the head of the government in india the head of the state is the president and head of the government is the prime minister the prime minister you know plays the very vital role in the parliamentary democracy okay here in the SCCO meetings also the Prime Minister of India represents India both in the Council of Head of the State as well as in the Head of the Government Council. Okay, so this Council of the Head of the uh, Heads of the Government, this is the second highest council. Okay, below this Council of Head of the State, this is the second highest decision making uh, body. This also holds the annual summits at which time members discuss the issues of multilateral cooperation yes in this meeting the cooperation uh, related meetings or the talks will be uh, held this approves the organization's budget yes this is the top level decision making body but this council of the head of the government it will approve the budget prepared by the various organizations under the scvo okay so this is the budget approval body then council of foreign ministers this is the third Council, which is under the SCO, okay. This this also holds the regular meetings. 
in this meetings these council of foreign ministers will discuss the current international situation and the ssco's interaction with other international organizations so compared to the council of head of the government and the council of heads of the state this council of foreign ministers they will hold the meeting often okay they will analyze the present international situation and the relation of various member states of the ssco with other uh, countries in the world okay so this is the responsibility of the foreign ministers of this ssco then there is a fourth organization fourth important organization or the uh, grouping it is called as the council of national coordinators okay this coordinates the multilateral cooperation of the member states within the framework of the ssco's charter okay so that means these are the four councils are the four top level decision making groupings under the ssco okay this is what is the organizational structure of the sco then there is a one organization called as the regional anti terrorist structure or the rats okay in short it is called as the rats regional anti terrorist structure what is this structure as the name itself suggests it is the anti terrorist structure so this ssco is grouped mainly on the uh, issues related to the security security means it comes with the other associated issues called the extremism regionalism and the religious fundamentalism and the terrorism okay this ssco is concerned more about the terrorism to talk about the terrorism to have the concrete structure and to have the uh, solid issue uh, the discussion related to the terrorism the ssco has established one permanent secretary uh, secretary uh, sorry secretariat that is the rats this rats was established in the year 2004 this is uh, this has the executive committee okay this rats executive committee has the headquarter in the city of tashkent located in the country of uzbekistan it is a permanent organ of the ssco this rats serves to promote the cooperation of the member states against the three evils of there are three evils this ssco recognizes these three as the evils of the world what are those three evils terrorism separatism and the extremism these three are regarded as the evils in the world by the ssco this rats are the regional anti terrorist structure will work or it will coordinate uh, to to uh, to it will coordinate with the member states to curb the these three evils of terrorism separatism and the extremism okay the director of the ssco's rats executive committee there is a director for this organization okay this director is will be holding the office for the three year term okay the current director of this rats is ruslan marzev okay ruslan marzev is the present director of the rats under the ssco each member state also sends a permanent representative to the rats yes this has the permanent uh, office in the tashkent this tashkent office will be represented by all the member states of the ssco but this is headed by the uh, rats executive this committee is headed by the director okay now he is the ruslan marzev so this is what is the rats now what are the activities of the ssco so far what kind of the functions or the what kind of actions the uh, Sek shanghai cooperation organization has taken so far let us look into that see this act the activities of this grouping are majorly related to the cooperation with respect to the security okay with respect to the military activities okay since this is the security related ar uh, arrangement the military and the military cooperation becomes the very important aspect under the ssco let us look into the activities of the ssco first one is cooperation with respect to the security this is the ssco is primarily centered on the security related concerns yes often describing the main threats to the 
main threats it confronts as being the terrorism separatism and extremism yes these are the three evils of the world okay this security arrangement is concerned with respect to these three evils then under this uh, security cooperation this rats was established in the year 2004 and in 2006 Uh, it planned to fight cross border drug drug crimes yes under the counter terrorism rubric under the rubric of counter terrorism it planned to counter the drug menace okay cross border drug menace cross border drug menace extremism separatism and the terrorism these are the co cooperated areas under the scco then In 2007, SEC was signed an agreement with the Collective Security Treaty Organization. There is an organization called the CSTO or the Collective Security Treaty Organization. This was to broaden the cooperation on issues such as security, crime, and drug trafficking. Okay. Then the organization is also redefining the cyber warfare. See, if you look into the domain of this organization, it is including in its fold the cyber trafficking or the cyber warfare. It is including the information war. It is including the cross-border drug drug menace. It is including the separatism tendencies. It is including the terrorism also. Okay, this has the wider scope with respect to its journey from time to time. year after year this organization is being you know it is becoming stronger with respect to the cooperation in the field of in the field of security now it has redefined the cyber warfare okay by saying that the dissemination of the information harmful to the see if you look into the wordings carefully harm the information which is harmful to the spiritual moral and cultural spheres of the other states should be considered as a security threat okay security threat not only deploying the military in the borders not only targeting the missiles in the space it is not only the threat but the threat or the information which threatens or which creates the tension in the field of spiritualism morality and the cultural sphere they can be regarded as the cyber warfare okay the information related to the threat to these spheres can be related uh, treated as the cyber warfare this is the new definition given by the scco organization okay then it has a, an accord adopted in the year 2009 this accord redefined or it has defined the information war what is the information war with respect uh, with res uh, sorry uh, according to the scco so it has defined the information war in part as an effort by the state to undermine the another's political economic and social systems if the information which threatens the political economic and social systems that can be regarded as the information war okay so these are the new definitions given by the scco with respect to the security then with respect to the military activities this organization is conducting year after year the regular military uh, meetings or it is you know conducting the military uh, operations okay over the past few years this organization's activities have expanded to include the increased military cooperation intelligence sharing and the counter terrorism military exercises are regularly conducted among the members okay so these are the two important security related cooperation of the ssco military activities as well as the cooperation with respect to the security so apart from this it has cooperated on on various you know subjects with respect to the economy as, as well as the culture let's not go deeper into this aspect let us restrict ourselves to the uh, security related issues only so now this organization has had various summits the first summit was in the year 2001 okay the ssc was first summit was in the china which was held in the city of shanghai okay it was in the year 2001 first summit of the sco okay this is not the first summit of the shanghai five okay there is no more shanghai five now this is the six during in, in the year 2001 there were six members in the ssco those six members sat together in the city of shanghai okay this is the ssco's first summit but in the last summit was in the tajikistan that is in the city of dushanbe in the year 2021 this year the summit is not at over it is planned to be held in the city of samarkand located in the country of uzbekistan okay this will be held in the month of september 
September 2022. Okay, this is upcoming uh, meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Okay, after the summits, let us look into the other aspect. What is the importance of this grouping for India? What is the significance of this grouping for India? What are the advantages this grouping poses for India? Let us look into that. See, with respect to the security aspect, first we will you know, analyze the advantages of this grouping for India with respect to the security, economy, with respect to the geopolitics, okay, so and the trade. So, first by looking into the security aspect, so India through the RADS can improve its counter-terrorism abilities by working toward the intelligence sharing, okay, intelligence sharing, law enforcement and developing the best practices and the technologies. See, India being located in the South Asia, this South Asia is, you know, uh, heavily infected by the uh, uh, other problems like the terrorism okay there are various terror attacks on india so uh, in the the neighborhood in india is uh, unstable okay especially in the western border of india is highly unstable so from that area there are uh, terror attacks so to counter the terror attacks posed on the western border we can cooperate with uh, very well with the s uh, members of this uh, grouping with respect to the intelligence sharing enforcement and the with respect to the uh, sharing of the best practices and the technologies with the other countries then through this organization india can also work on anti-drug trafficking yes anti-drug trafficking drug menace or the smuggling of the drugs is also a very uh, major problem in india as well as the proliferation of the arms especially the small arms to counter the proliferation of the small arms to counter the cross-border drug smuggling to uh, to counter the terror, uh, uh, terrorist activities, the cooperation of this grouping is very, very crucial for India. Okay, This is with respect to the security. With respect to the energy, you know very well that India is a deficient country with respect to the energy, especially the hydrocarbons like the coal, oil and the other natural gases. Okay, To have the energy security in India, to enjoy the continuous supply of India, we, uh, sorry, supply of oil to the India, India has to collaborate very well with the SCO members. This SCO will, you know, provide a great opportunity for India to have the energy security in India. Because the countries like the Iran, the Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, sorry, uh, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, they are very, uh, very well, uh, they are rich in the natural resources, okay. By having the uh, very cordial relations, especially by having the uh, fruitful interactions with these countries in this grouping we can ensure the energy security in india okay there is one more very important advantage for india with respect to the pipelines that is the gas pipelines there are two very very important gas lines in india which are not properly implemented okay these are the international uh, gas connectivity programs okay one is the tapi pipeline and another one is the ipi pipeline this is turkmenistan afghanistan pakistan and india okay in short it is called as the tapi pipeline it runs from turkmenistan to india okay so this is very well uh, thought out uh, uh, pipeline but this pipeline gas pipeline is not properly implemented because there is a country called the Pakistan. It is not negotiating properly with India. It doesn't want to uh, supply the oil to India. But Pakistan being a part of SCO, we can have the fruitful di discussion with the Pakistan also and India can sort out the issues with the Pakistan. So in that way, this SCO provides a very good platform to sort out the issues with the countries like the Pakistan. And the, there is a IPI uh, pipeline also, that is Iran, Pakistan and India. This pipeline runs from Iran to India. Here also the Pakistan is involved. By having the, or by taking the Pakistan in, into consideration on the negotiating table in the SCCO summits, we can sort out and we can bring the energy security to India and we can re in state the stalled pipelines like the IPI and the TAPI. Okay, this is the advantage or the significance for India by the SCO grouping and there is a trade aspect. Okay, the SCO provides a direct access to the Central Asia. This is very, very important. So, so far because in between 
uh, Central Asia and India, there is a country called Pakistan. To reach the Central Asian countries, we have to go through the Pakistan border. But Pakistan provides, you know, uh, it, it doesn't provide the access for Indian goods to cross through its route. But SSCO, it provides the access for the Central Asia. We can reach the Central Asia by, you know, uh, going through the Chinese border, okay? So, SSCO provides the direct access to Central Asia, overcoming the main hindrance in flourishing of the trade between the India and the Central Asia. The grouping also acts as an alternative route to the Central Asia and economic ties. Central Asian countries provides India with a market for its IT, telecommunications, banking, finance and the pharmaceutical industries. Yes, for the Indian goods, in the sectors like the telecommunication, information technology, banking, finance and pharmaceuticals, these goods in these sectors have the high demand in the Central Asian market. Okay, To reach out this Central Asian market, India has the great advantage through the SCO. Okay, So, I said the Pakistan doesn't provide the access to Indian goods to, uh, to cross through its border okay but even having the fruitful discussion on this negotiating table in the SCO so we can reach out to the Central Asia okay and we can extend the our market and we can have the more and more trading relation with the Central Asian countries next geopolitical significance so this grouping also provides the geopolitical significance for India also in what way so it can India can have the opportunity to have more and more uh, Central Asian policy or to connect the Central Asia, we can have the very good opportunity here. Okay, So Central Asia is a part of India's extended neighborhood. Yes, in India, it has the neighbors like the Nepal, okay, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, Bangladesh, Bhutan. Okay, These are our immediate neighbors. But there is a concept called as the extended neighborhood the neighbors which are beyond the immediate neighbors they are called as the extended neighbors okay so we can extend our relations to these extended neighborhoods uh, hood through the uh, the SCO membership okay in this uh, group helps India fulfill its aspiration of playing an active role in its extended neighborhood as well as checking the ever-growing influence of China in Eurasia yes China is expanding its market, it is expanding its uh, financial system by providing the cheaper loans, especially in the Eurasian region. This Eurasian region is nothing but the Central Asian region also, okay, it includes the Russia uh, and various other uh, countries in the region. But the Eurasia in this context, it means more the Central Asian countries along with the Russia, okay. India can tackle the influence of Chinese influence in the Eurasian region by having the more and more good uh, connectivity with the Central Asian countries. Okay, this SCO also provides a platform for India to simultaneously engage with its traditional friend Russia as well as the rivals like the China and the Pakistan. Especially in the present geopolitical scenario, China and the Pakistan have become the rivals for India with respect to trade, with respect to the security and with respect to the maritime security also. But to counter these countries, we have some of the very good uh, no, uh, uh, countries like the Russia. Okay, They are the trusted uh, uh, relatives or the, they are the trusted uh, the countries for India to supply the uh, arms or to supply the military intelligence or to share the military intelligence or other uh, vital uh, input for India. Okay, there are friends, there are rivals in this grouping. Having the rivals as well as the friends, India can, up, you know, it can harvest this opportunity and it can put all its concerns on the negotiating table and we can overcome the problems associated with the China and the Pakistan. This is the great geopolitical advantage for India. Okay, with with respect to trade, with respect to the geopolitics, with respect to the security and with respect to the energy, this grouping provides a great significance for India. Okay. Next, let us come to the major aspect of this upcoming meeting. So, in this year, in 2022, this grouping will see the one more expansion by including the Iran in its fold, it, the membership will increase. Now, the grouping has the eight members. 
upon the inclusion of the iran it will become the nine member grouping okay the iran will be included in the 2022 2022 summit at the samarkand okay that is in the uh Uzbekistan okay in Uzbekistan in the month of September the Iran will be added into this grouping but along with the Iran there are talks about the inclusion of the Belarus also the Belarus will be included subsequently in this grouping but not this year okay not in 2022 but the Belarus may be included in 23 24 or any of the years in the upcoming days okay but the belarus application for ssco membership will soon start though the procedure or the process for inclusion of belarus will start uh, very soon after the inclusion of the iran into the grouping okay so this is the second expansion first expansion was in the year 2017 when the pakistan and india were included in the grouping okay so this is after the five years of first expansion now the second expansion of ssco is you know happening now the iran will be included in this group what is the advantage for iran why what kind of benefits iran will derive by being the member or the permanent member of the ssco let us look into that so due to its geopolitical location due to the geopolitical location of iran and the its energy resources iran could become an important trading partner yes because of its geopolitical location so where this iran is located it is located in the western part of the asia so it is surrounded by the countries like the uh, gulf countries like the saudi arabia iraq iran sorry iraq uh, yemen oman various other extended neighbors are there around the iran and it is also located near the persian gulf which is the busy route for the uh, transport of the goods and services especially the oil okay so by having such a significant geopolitical position in the western asia iran can play a very important role for the member countries in the grouping okay so iran obviously being the major supplier of the crude oil in the world so it will become the important trading partner for all the countries in the grouping then iran's membership could bring the economic benefit to the country and promote the cooperation in the energy sector yes it will bring the economic benefit for the country that is the iran okay this grouping will bring the benefit to the iran country by bringing more and more economic benefits okay iran could serve as an important supplier of energy especially with china which could be very useful due to its sanctions imposed on the country now as of now the america has imposed various sanctions on the iran but if the iran is included in this grouping the members like the china india they can borrow more and more oil from the iran and in that way the economy of the iran will be benefited too much from the ssco then iran's membership in the ssco could make the country less vulnerable to the western sanctions yes western uh, countries Uh, and the usa they have put sanctions on the iran and the iran sorry iran can overcome these sanctions making the iran more sorry ma making it more difficult to increase pressure on the iran future nuclear or other diplomatic talks see by having the backup of the countries like the russia and the china as well as the india in this grouping iran though the sanctions are imposed on the iran by the countries like the Uh, america or other western countries these sanctions can be easily overcome by the Ch uh, iran okay so there will not be any much pressure on the iran with respect to the nuclear or dipl other diplomatic relations okay iran's membership could enable it to negotiate from a position of st greater strength in the future yes by having the support of the countries like the india russia and the china and other central asian countries in the uh, grouping iran can have the more and more negotiating power and it can become the more greater uh, it it will you know it it will have the greater strength to negotiate okay with respect to other countries okay these are the advantages for india uh, for iran by having the membership of the ssco now what is the advantage of advantage for india by inclusion of the iran in the grouping with the iran's access accession to the ssco india's push for connectivity in the eurasian region through the instc and chahabar port will get the boost yes now instc or international north south transport corridor which connects the indian ocean with the uh, 
uh, the European continent. Okay, there is a uh, train as well as the road uh, line. Okay, roadways as well as the uh, railway lines which have been laid uh, between the Indian Ocean and the European continent. These route connects various ports, uh, various uh, other you know major uh, trading centers in the region. Okay, it runs from Iran to the uh, uh, Europe and it crosses the Turkey and uh, various other countries in between. Okay, it is a very, you know, uh, it's a very good initiative by the countries in the region. Now the these you know projects INSTC it is not making much progress, but by inclusion of the Iran in this grouping, we can have the uh, the faster you know implementation of the INSTC. In this project, the Russia is also a major player okay along with the india so these kind of you know infrastructure projects are the connectivity projects can you know boost up so along with the instc chahabahar port will also get the boost now so because of the geopolitical tensions especially the sanctions imposed by the usa the chahabahar port so and the trade related activities in this port they are not that significant but by inclusion of the iran and by having the more and more you know, talks with the Iran in the grouping. So these kind of you know infrastructure projects will get the boost. Okay, this is the advantage for India, and these you know routes and the ports will you know increase the trade of the India, and it will uh, increase the external sector of the Indian economy. Okay, this is all about the advantages of the grouping for uh, sorry advantages of having the iran in the grouping for india as well as for the iran okay so this is all about the shanghai cooperation organization its origin its uh, journey its expansion of the membership and the advantage for india as well as iran thank you very much for watching this video